This guy <laughs> forgot to put I his forgot. crown on. I forgot. I was dazed. This I man was, was so like, sleepy. I, I'm the prince. I don't need no, pr I don't need no crown. Shut I'm a strong, independent up. prince. And I come in. RJ's looking at me like, yo, I forgot my crown. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, shit. So I'm coming in. I'm like in the wings. Milena's like right there, super close to off stage. I'm looking at Milena. I'm like, I got the crown. I got the crown. And she's looking at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> like she's on stage. She's got to stay in character. So I kind of just left the crown there, like at her feet. And I don't know what she did. She must have picked it up and put she it on her head it, or something. Yeah. She picked it up, and then, like, my crown was on backwards. <laughs> and there's, like, this huge gap on my forehead where, like, this other piece is supposed to be. And, like, I was, like, saying my lines after the peasants were clearing out. And um, she was like, oh, you did it. I did do it. And I think I know who I am now. And then as she's saying my lines, I could feel, like, her putting the crown on me. And then I'm like, it's backwards. Transitions were very frustrating. Where when people were here, it was hard to fill the men when they did come. Leading the band was very frustrating. Leading cues is more challenging, especially when you have it timed with the music. You gotta see Carly dress other people and just everything just in a rush. There's this one scene where Lola is wearing the yellow dress. She has to come off, we have to dress her into something else. And then she goes off and then Milena comes right back and we have to dress her in the same dress. We have to make sure everything's on her. And it's we have like 30 seconds to put this entire like two layers of this dress on her. It's hard, but we got through it. We did it. It just took a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of yelling at people. But at the end of it, it was all worth the stress because we did put on a great show. From different versions of Cinderella, our characters are more dynamic. It's really different from the cartoon animation version that I think a lot of people are used to. Very different from the, the Disney movie that we're all used to as kids. What an in a lifetime kind of deal. Because there's so much crowd over here, come downstage and then talk to her like this. So that opens you up to the rest of the audience and then it's Well, like we've been planning this for about a year. Um, the Broadway version wasn't available for uh, to license in as of September this year, but this is a version that I really wanted to do. I really felt that it was a modern, a more updated, more sensible version of the show. And so when the rights did become available, we jumped on them right away, we booked them, and we've been in rehearsal since mid-January and the cast has been great, the, the crew has been great, the show has been a lot of hard work but I think that the fruits of so many different departments' labors is going to really show in this performance. Things have to be higher, you know, your risk is so big right now, I'm not really sick, but you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go meet, like you're doing something underhanded and sneaky, okay, show that in your voice. Pick it up from, I'm not really sick. I'm not really sick. I'm pretending. It feels like when Charlotte was in school and tried to get out of things she didn't like, like the third and fourth grade. I will be sick just as we are leaving for the carriage. Madame and Charlotte will leave without me. I will then change back into my regular clothes and meet Jean-Michel. I'm taking him up on his offer to go to a soup kitchen. A soup kitchen? A soup kitchen? I get to ladle. You heard me. The process is really really interesting. It's cool because in every play, the process is a little bit different, you know? Because there's different people, it's a different atmosphere, uh, different lines, different characters, and uh, there's always like different complex, dynamic uh, relationships that happen. It was a new experience for me. This is my first time taking on a lead role as the prince. Um, a lot of the challenges that I faced uh, taking on this role is more or less in the musical aspect, where I'm accustomed to pop style singing rather than Broadway tones, where you know it's more of that rich and deep tone and like sharp enunciations as Broadway singers usually do. Thank you.
damn and try to keep John Michel out of the stockade. Ah, the way my mind works anyway. <laughs> so we're playing Ella's stepsisters and um, we differ from the different versions of Cinderella, like the Disney version, as though we're not. I don't really think that our characters are like typical tropes. Um, there are certain levels of humanity behind our character and kind of you see that the reason why we are the way we are is because of the way we were raised by um, a dad. It's hilarious! The powder room was full of yammering when we were leaving. Girls were screaming, Why did the car run away? Other versions of Cinderella, like the classic Disney version, the stepsisters are not just out to ruin Cinderella's life. We're out to have our own goals and we have our own we we have our own plans in our head of where we want to be. I can imagine. I can imagine too. Don't worry, I can see. I'm trying to imagine it. I think that actually makes the show much more interesting than just seeing two evil stepsisters. It gives people gets the people to relate to all the characters, including the stepsisters, instead of just victimizing them. I feel like because of the fact that we've all grown up with this Cinderella story and, um, you know, reading the books and watching movies and all that, you kind of have um, an idea of that character. So acting like them isn't hard. It's not like I had any sort of personal enmity towards Milena in order to be able to act like our characters are enemies. Um, it's not like that at all because you kind of forget yourself and who you are when the other person is playing along so well. Dressed up and ready for court. How do I look? For you. Do you think that you could go to court? I never loved your father. I just wanted his money. You have been nothing but a nuisance to me since the day he died. And you think that you could wear a beautiful gown you think that is acceptable? You should be enraged! Mother, stop! Born out raised! That's all you deserve! And I am no longer your mother! You, Gabrielle, out of my house! And to the devil with you! And I'll decide what to do with you later. Why did you have to make me doubt myself? I was doing so well. Monroe, Madame, rips my dress, and it was kind of, it was all my hope. It was uh, the lead up between Lola, uh, the sister who finally, uh, I feel like someone cares about me, and I'm giving all these opportunities, and I'm going to go again, and I'm going to get back up from the ground, and I'm in this dress, and she just tears it. Uh, that scene is kind of... It's it's really special because after that you also see Manroop say what's her line? Uh, what well, I was doing so well, and I'm right there. I everyone knows that I can hear her, and I was doing so well, and I see her vulnerability. And um, to play off of what you were saying before on how was it? It was. I don't know, I was Ella, she was Madame, and it was just a moment of, like, why? And, and then we find out, it's because she felt so alone, and she felt like I was taking all the attention off of her, with my father and everything. And it was just her who was crumbling, and then as a result, it was hurting me. When you have a role that's so different from your personality, you kind of have to, uh create a backstory for that person. So for Madame, there was this kind of backstory that she's been hurt a lot and um, she's kind of lost her sense of love and compassion and sympathy for Ella, but still has that present for her own daughters. Um, and I feel like when you tap into the backstory of the character, you relate with them more and it's kind of like instead of you're creating a character of your own, it's like you're talking to someone, learning about their story and empathizing with them. And I feel like that helps an actor uh, take on a role that could be so different from their personality or so far-fetched from reality.
There's a lot of just single moving pieces that don't really have a backdrop. It's uh, a lot of forced perspective from the audience. Changes were pretty difficult. We had to like practice quite a bit, but I think the end product was like worth it. It wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard at the same time because I have a lot of help from Daniel over here too, and Adele, right, and T. That was a lot of fun to build. Even though there were some challenges, it was doable. Work all day, every day. That's how we do it here at Drama. That's right. Hard work, hard work. Yeah. It was difficult, but you know what? We had the right crew. Shout out to Daniel Sean. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of it, I sat down and I looked up the set and he did the work. But, I can say that I, um, I, uh... She won't show. This is lunacy. She will come. We're having a banquet tonight, and you are inviting everyone in the kingdom. Don't forget who you're talking to. <laughs> Honestly, playing Sebastian, like, when I was, when I was uh, given the role, I had no idea who, who uh, that character was, but throughout the production of the play, um, I started to develop the character through the scenes that we ran. It was, he was a, a real jerk, and I know why, that, I think that's why Damon gave me the role, but, you know, I have, I'm not shooting shots at anybody. Um, what personal touches did I put on uh, the character? Um, I put a lot of the goofiness and, um, and playfulness as, as uh, you know, as, a, as, my, as I am, I put that into the character, and yeah. <laughs> Leading the band was very frustrating. At first, I didn't think much of it, because it was just a label, but then as time went on and my responsibility grew, it kind of became even more frustrating. You have to marry me. I mean, uh, uh, will you marry me? Uh, wait, come on. Cinderella, will you marry me? Yes, my handsome prince, Chris will marry me. Very dedicated. Uh, yeah, he's just an amazing actor and an amazing person. It's always a pleasure to work with him, and I think I can speak on behalf of everyone. Um, for for this version of Cinderella, it's really cool because the love scene isn't the typical. Uh, You're a prince. <laughs> I like you. Uh, let's get married. It, it's more. Um, it progresses slower and there's more depth to it and they like each other more than based on looks and kindness. It's more of, you're making a change. Uh, you're being kind of assertive. I'm being Prince Topa right now and I, I like that. I kind of need that. Uh, and Ella helps Topher find himself and in the midst of all that they help find a democracy and it touches on all these other bigger pictures. And yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice to play. Uh, it was a very sweet romance. Or are you wonderful? Because I love you. Are you the sweet invention of a lover's dream? Love interest was something that I never really touched upon in drama. Uh, but, you know, it was a new experience for me, uh, such as, you know, like, working, just working with Milana in general, she was, uh, you know, she's a really sweet and kind person, you know, was, she was really cooperative and we just, we helped each other, you know, with a lot of things, like I'd help her with her singing and she'd help me with everything else. Uh, but yeah, you know, it was... Interesting, it was new. <laughs> when 
I was asked, I was very honored because you know it's it's a it's a beautiful beautiful play. It's a beautiful musical. Um, very different from the from the Disney thing that the Disney movie that we're all used to as kids. But it was it was a big honor being asked. And going into the production, I was very excited, very to, excited to work with the cast. Um, it was actually my first time being in a musical and just the dynamics between regular dance classes, um, regular um, hip hop classes um, versus um, versus theater. It's it's it, it was an amazing experience. Kind of like change from the Princess Giving a Ball, that kind of you know properness that uh, the ballroom and everything brought to how it was so like intricate and not really sterile, but like was like choreographed so finely and it looked like so much detail was into it and I loved how like it could be done and that it was something that you know most high schools can't do, that, that kind of huge ballroom scene of dancing. Where when people weren't here, it was hard to fill the men when they did come. And with spacing and all, it's better to have people where they're supposed to be instead of just kind of keeping it in your mind. Because as co-captains, you have this leadership role and you have to maintain it. Um, and you have so much responsibility. It's hard to keep track of everything you're doing and the spacing, which was really important for the whole play. Though. It's hard to say um, my favorite. I would like to, I could say my favorite, but honestly, making the entire show along with Damon, my other co-dance captain, Manisha, um, it was, it's hard to say, pick a favorite when everything was just put up, pulled together also all very nicely by the rest of the cast, by the rest of the dancers, and everybody who put so much work into the show. I am sick of hiding in the shadows like a fearful person. Would you rather see Madame? Hiding is nice. John Michel is a revolutionary in the Broadway version of Cinderella. He's a very loud person and he doesn't he speaks his mind and he he doesn't he doesn't want to like keep anything in. He always wants to he always wants, you know, you know, let everything out of his mouth, you know. He he runs his mouth a lot and it's for a reasonable reason, right? Because he wants to be the change that that the people want. You know how the peasants and the tradespeople are are you know getting their property taken from them. He's he he wants to take action. He he will do anything to, you know to make change in this you know in this story in this Cinderella story in the subplot. The queen was one of my favorites because I enjoyed who I was working with on stage. I just the scene like and I also liked because I was working with like all like my friends. So being queen and working with them, just everything was always perfect. We always did the scene right. We always added things. And it was just, being the queen is one of my favorite roles. And also one of the challenges that I faced uh, going through this production was, you know, trying to convey a sort, of met, a sort of real message to people in a very surreal way, such as musicals, such as like, you know, there's all that magic happening with the fairy godmother and such and things are overly exaggerated but there is a certain message that everyone can relate to with believing in yourself with self-confidence like yeah hell there's the prince who is having trouble with trying to find himself trying to find his place in the kingdom as well as Cinderella you know trying to keep her feet on on the ground while and amidst the trouble that you know her step family is giving her yeah, it was a very new experience for me. Cinderella is my first ever play that I've been at in Burn Creek and it was just like really overwhelming and the end product was so beautiful. Like I was so proud that we finished the show and I was just like, it was beautiful. Like, yeah, <laughs> and um, it was I learned that there are a lot of hard work goes into the process of making a play and that it's not some easy thing you can go around and be like, oh yeah, I did the Cinderella play, like blah, but it's actually like really significant and important to me. 
The most challenging part about my role is probably the part when I have to reveal myself. I have to act first crazy and old before and to make sure that Cinderella is the right, right girl and grateful for all the magic and I can that I can do for her. And so that that like especially the voice of being an old lady, I probably not played it that that well, but I tried my best to sound old and sound different from becoming by after I revealed myself as the fairy god. But there's music in you because when you listen to the version that Damon sent to me, it was like operatic, like it's like an, it was an opera singer. So that kind of freaked me and like scared me that if I can actually do that kind of job. But I think I did pretty well. In theater, it's like from five to ten. 30 every day, especially during Hell Week. You're spending hours and hours, not including the weekends where it's like eight hours with the same people. And you get to know them on a different level than when you're just like in school with them. Because in school, there's like, I don't know, there's always a lesson going on. And yes, uh, you just get to see a different side of people uh, in their characters and not in their characters. It was just so amazing. It's always so amazing getting to know them. Uh, this is my second play. My first play I was in was Oliver. And um, the cast and crew there were amazing as well. It's one of those things where whenever you're in a really, really big objective or like commitment in your life and then it's like finished, like for example, if you're in a sport, you're a basketball game and finally like the tournament is over and you're like, wow, what do I do with my life now? It's kind of like, it, it, it's all over now and I miss it so much. And I miss the people and the, those, darn dress changes. It was definitely an experience that I'm never going to forget. Um, coming into this, never have been in drama or never have like ever thinking about doing a play or musical. Um, I came, to the, came into it when Damon asked me um, and he really, he motivated me every step of the way to push me at, like, out of my comfort zone sometimes to maybe take a line when really I didn't want to take a line but then taking the line was like like having my four lines was quite the experience for me but the experience was nothing but good it was it was something i never thought i'd do but damon really pushed me and really showed me that it's something that i do i enjoyed and really will remember for the rest of my life the, the high energy the, the this is the discovery of the i'm coming up with a plan that is going to be disruptive to my mother, my, my mother's life. Rehearsals are something that people need to take very seriously. We have our fun and our jokes and things like that, but when it comes right down to it, the time that we spend is really about figuring out what your character is, what your intention is, what your st what story you want to tell, and this last week has really been a testament to the cast to really showcase the opportunity for them to fully develop and showcase those characters, bringing them to life, and allowing the audience to see what I see in them. After clapping, go back. No, not from you, from the audience. Oh. Uh, I 
can't really pick out my favorite scene per se. I really like the transformation scene and I think that the audience is really going to like that too. There's a lot of really interesting elements and a really cool surprise transformation that's going to happen that I'm not going to reveal to you just yet. But you'll have a chance to see when you come to the show and I think it's really well executed. Every single scene was a memory for me, but my most favorite one is probably um, my transformation scene with Ella. That was, that was, that was kind of... Okay, first in the beginning it was kind of like hard and I want to cry because like I think I'm not doing a good job. But then after every show, I kind of like started to get the feels of everything and I enjoyed every, every scene. Honestly, I'd never get tired of the transformation scene. Like it's the most hype moment. It's like the most iconic moment in the play. And yeah, I've seen the dress, like I've seen the transformation happen several times, but I just never get tired of it. It's something special to see backstage. My favorite dance number was the waltz, personally, because um, there's that one lift that Jameson and I did. I thought it was really pretty, and I like the ball gowns we wore. And the choreography was nice. The waltz, all of it was very clean. Joy and I cleaned it up. Um, and all the performers performed that dance specifically really, really well because they all knew what they were doing after so many hours of rehearsal. My favorite part of the play, always, and I don't know why, it was always at the end when I'm walking in my uh, wedding dress and I finally get there. And it would always, like, Quinn knows this, it would always, like, time out perfectly. And I feel like everyone knew, but no one ever said anything. And then we would all be like, um, and love is a song. And it was everyone all together. Me, RJ, everyone. And love is a song. And it was like, I don't know, it felt really special. Like everyone was all, as a collective, we were one. So, yeah, I miss it. Of course I'm gonna miss this cast because it's also my last year. So this is the last play I'll ever do because I'm going off to college and I'm not taking drama. So this cast itself is going to be really, really special because it's the last people I'll ever work with. And I made such, such good friends in like the theater program and I'm going to miss them so much. So yeah, this cast, definitely, definitely I'm going to miss so much when I leave. I'm, I'm really going to miss this, this casting crew. Like, Everyone there was just absolutely wonderful, you know? Like everyone was just so welcoming, so friendly, you know, we shared a lot of good moments and we pulled through a lot of, uh, a lot of struggles as a, as a collective. Um, and you know, like everyone was there for each other whenever we had our own kind of problems. The prince is giving a ball. The prince is giving a ball it was so much fun. We got to dance on stage, sing on stage, do a little bit of acting. A lot of it was improv that you got to just be like, oh, how was your day? And I thought it was just really interesting how so many people could dance on stage without bumping into each other and all <laughs> these things. Cinderella, the afterthoughts. Uh, we are now on the third day of our final day of cleanup for the Cinderella musical that we did here at Burn Creek. Everything has been torn down, the set has been torn down, the costumes are all being taken away, props are being taken away, we're starting to pay people for all the work that they've done in the process and I'm feeling good. We, we made some money on the show, we didn't go into a deficit, we actually profited which is always a good thing in theater and I couldn't have asked for a better group of individuals to work with. Everyone from media arts to the music department to uh, drama to the administrators to the janitorial staff, everyone had a hand in the contribution of the success of our show and I really think that I couldn't have done it without the continued support of a collective group, the community that is here at Bird Creek. I'm really sad that this is gonna be my last big musical here, but I don't know what the future has in store for me, so I may be back, I may not. Anything is possible, I guess. Oh, everyone was wonderful to work with, like Damon, the stepsister, like we were all like a fa big family and I didn't felt like I was left out in any situation. I really did like working with Damon. He's a fun character. Um, he has great discipline. He put great discipline on us and gave us responsibilities um, and trusted us, which is really great. 
Um, he didn't doubt us, maybe just a little bit, but yeah, it was really nice working with him. Damon is one of the most hardworking, passionate, determined, unorganized people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> But uh, he got it done, and it was great working with the guy. It was it was fun. I never worked with Damon, so I didn't really know much about him at the start. But when we started working together, he was like really caring, and he really like he really helped me out. Damon was like he was like a teacher at times. He was like a buddy at times. He was someone that had to yell at us to keep us in place at times. But at the end of the day, he was just a great director and a nice guy to us. And, made me do things that I didn't think I'd love to do, but he told me I love him, and at the end of the day, I love him. Damon? Oh, Damon's terrible. I'm kidding. Damon is amazing. He is such an amazing director. Um, one of the things that, I've only worked with him twice, but one of the things that I actually really love about um, Damon's style of directing is that when you don't understand something, like you say you have a line, and you just, don't get why you're saying this line, be it, you don't get your incentive or your intention, you'll be like, here, and he'll give you, uh, here's my line, and he'll give you like the backstory, and um, he just feels that he really connects and really understands um, whatever he's talking about, like his plays, and he's so passionate um, about what he does, and um, when he needs to be strict and mad, you know, he'll yell, yell at us when he needs to. But he's also so sweet, and um, one time he got us cookies, which is cool. <laughs> and, um, um, yeah, I just love working with him. He's so hardworking, and um, he's my friend, too. I consider him a friend. He's a really great friend. Yeah. You're awesome, Damon. We love you. Make sure you come watch Outsiders Spring 2017. It's gonna be lit. Gangland fights, knife fights. Oh yeah, let's go! Ah!